Hello, and welcome to English Micro Listening Lessons, where you can improve your listening skills by learning how sounds change or disappear in spoken English. This series of videos can be watched in any order and can be used for self-study by independent English language learners or in a classroom by English language teachers. There's information in the box below the video for teachers. Spoken English can be difficult to understand due to something called connected speech, which is the continuous stream of sounds without clear borders between a sequence of words. There, that's better. Some features of connected speech that can make sounds change or disappear at word boundaries and affect your ability to hear words you know are coalescence, elision, reduction, assimilation, resyllabification, linking, and intrusion. Don't worry. I'll explain what each of these means in this series. Awareness of them will improve your ability to hear individual words in the stream of spoken English. Ready? Here we go. This is Deswan Allen introducing his company. Is he saying gray day or grade A? Hi, and welcome to grade A promotion page. Hi. And welcome to Grade A Promotion Page. Hi, and welcome to Grade A Promotion Page. If you're watching with someone else or with your teacher and classmates, pause the video and compare your answers. So he is saying Grade A, which means of the highest quality. However, grade A can sound more like gray day. In fact, they both can sound like grade A, grade A. Why is that? It's due to a feature of connected speech called resyllabification. So just to kind of break down this long word, re means again, and syllab is for syllable, which is a unit of pronunciation with one vowel sound. So looking over here, just a quick review of syllables, the um, just has one syllable, just one vowel sound. Uh. And here we've got two words, the man, and this red line uh, is dividing the syllables. So we've got two vowel sounds, a uh and a. Uh. So that gives us two syllables, the man. Down here, though, we have two words, but four syllables. So we've got the company. And so these red lines, again, are dividing the syllables. So we've got the company. So four vowel sounds, a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, e. <laughs> then uh, ification means the process of becoming. So basically, resyllabification means that the syllable sounds get changed. So here, uh, looking back at our example, a consonant at the end of one word, like grade, the D here, attaches to the beginning of the next word, usually one that starts with a vowel sound. So here we've got A, the vowel sound. So the D moves over and makes it sound like you're saying day instead of a. So grade a becomes gray day. There's often a, a very short pause. It's in connected speech, so it's all very fast, but there's a very brief pause um, right before the consonant sound that shows this move and that attaches the consonant to the next word and makes it sound like it's part of that following word. So that can be confusing for listeners because it can be hard to identify where exactly the word boundary is and it can make it sound like two completely new words like we see here. Here are a few more examples. So number one, an aim can sound like a name, a name, a name. They both can sound exactly the same. Number two, looked at 
can sound like look tat and tat is an abbreviation for a tattoo so they both can sound like look tat look tat and number three send them aid can sound like send the maid because the m moves over a maid is a woman who works by cleaning in a house or a hotel so they both can sound like send the maid send the maid so sometimes you even just have to go by context to figure out what you're actually hearing Now this is a little less common, but this can also happen when the following word starts with a consonant. The following word usually starts with a vowel, but here we've got ice cream, and cream starts with a consonant, not a vowel like we saw before. But still, the s sound in ice can move over and it can sound like I scream. So they both can just sound like ice cream, ice cream. So, so far, to illustrate resyllabification, I've shown how it can make two real words sound like two completely different real words. However, more often the new syllables are not real words, which can also be confusing. So, to give you a few other examples here, number one, these apples can just sound like the zapples these apples, these apples. Number two, come in can sound like come in, come in, come in. Number three, tell us can sound like tell us, tell us, tell us. And number four, an old can sound like a an old, an old. An old. So to help you practice hearing and just noticing resyllabification, read this paragraph and mark where you think resyllabification will occur. Pause the video if you need to while you do this. Again, if you're watching with someone else or with your teacher and classmates, pause the video and compare your answers now. Now I'm going to say this first fast and then a little slower. So listen and see if you notice any additional resyllabification or check the ones you thought uh, might be where it would happen. Here we go. Last week, I wanted to find out if the house I lived in as a child was still there. So I went on Google Maps and found it. I made out some huge new trees, but didn't think it looked better. When I told my mom, she didn't know about it. Now slower. Last week, I wanted to find out if the house I lived in as a child was still there. So I went on Google Maps and found it. I made out some huge new trees, but didn't think it looked better. When I told my mom, she didn't know about it. So if you need to pause the video and compare your answers again, see if you found any new ones. And here are the answers. So let's take a look first at these. Um, so number one, last week can sound like last tweak, 
Lass is a Scottish or Northern English word for a young woman. And tweak can mean a very small change. So that can, those both can sound like last week, last week. And number two, find out can sound like two completely different words. Fine doubt, find out, find out. Number three, lived in can sound like lived in, lived in, lived in. Din uh, means like a really loud, uh, kind of prolonged noise. Uh, number four, as a, doesn't sound like um, different words that are real. So I'm using the phonemic script here. And if you don't understand the these symbols in the phonemic script, please see the link below the video to the interactive phonemic chart. But um, as a can sound like a, the. And number five, went on can sound like when ton, which isn't really a word, but when can sound like is a real word. So that can be confusing. So went on, went on. Number six, found it can sound like found dit. Found it, found it. Number seven, made out, uh, which is um, like to barely be able to see or hear something. It has many meanings, but that's what it meant here. Can sound like may doubt, may doubt, may doubt. Number eight, think it can sound like thing kit. Again, two completely different words. They both sound like think it, think it. Number nine, when I doesn't sound like two real new uh, words, it's, um, but because it changes, it can sound like we nigh, we nigh. And number 10, about it can sound like a bow, what these gentlemen are doing here, and tit, which is this small little bird here. It can also be slang for a woman's breast. So they both can sound like about it, about it. So sometimes saying a feature of connected speech can help you hear it. So please listen and repeat. Try to um, just pause briefly and attach that final consonant to the following word so you can sort of notice the, the change. Okay, number one, last week. Last week. Number two, find out. Find out. Number three, lived in, lived in. Number four, as a, as a. Number five, went on, went on. Number six, found it, found it. Number seven, made out, made out. Number eight, think it, think it. Number nine, when I. When I. Number 10, about it. About it. So to review, with resyllabification, a consonant at the end of one word attaches to the beginning of the next word, usually one that starts with a vowel sound. So a final example is great ape 
can sound like gray tape, gray tape, gray tape. Now it's your turn. Think of another example of resyllabification between two words and write it in the comments or pause the video and share it with your teacher and classmates. And now for the real world challenge. I would first like to note that whether or not you hear this happen very much depends on the speaker and their accent and how fast or informally they're talking. But try to find an example of resyllabification between two words in a recorded or real life conversation and post it in the comments or share it with your teacher and classmates. Thank you for watching this English micro listening lesson. I hope it has helped you to better hear how sounds change or disappear in spoken English. Bye.